Welcome back, Authenticate fans. I did promise you I would be back very soon with another assembly video, and that it would be another Spitfire control, specifically the gun sight. And this clip from a recent video by Tactical Pascal shows us, with typical panache, exactly how to use it. Authenticit is a freeware project. We're creating flight controls for a wide range of aircraft with an initial focus on vintage warbirds, followed by vintage and classic general aviation. We're harnessing the power of 3D printing in conjunction with high quality but low cost components like hall sensors and sealed bearings. All flight controls can be assembled at your kitchen table with no workshop tools, no soldering and no metal work. You can source the parts yourself or third parties are providing kits of all the hardware as well as 3D printed parts. And this is what it looks like. It was designed entirely by Harry, a highly valued member of the Authenticate Discord. So this is really an exciting milestone for Authenticate, as I had very little to do with the design, apart from the fact Harry used the standard mag hall component for the input axis, and has used the same design and assembly techniques you will already be used to if you have built other Authenticate controls. In fact, one or two folks have already built a version using his original files. After a few adjustments to allow it to mount more effectively to the Authenticate instrument panel mounting system, as shown here, it is now ready for public release and you can download it now for free of course from download.authenticate.org. If you do want to use this quick release mounting system, then the download files for that are also available here. And if you're brand new to Authenticate, you'll need this universal hub, which connects all the Authenticate controls to your PC. Before I go any further though, and before I get inundated with complaints, I should point out that this is not strictly a Spitfire gun sight. It is the RAF Reflector Gunsight Mark II and it wasn't just fitted to the Spitfires. Here you can see a real one fitted to a Mosquito fighter bomber. Finally, before we build this thing, I thought a few of you might be interested in some usage guidelines. So I reached out to Requiem, who has the YouTube channel Air Combat Tutorial Library, and he's created a great video on deflection shooting and use of the reflector gun sight. Here's a clip from that video. The adjustable items are the firing range in yards and the wingspan of the target in the feet. By adjusting these, the site will show you when to fire at the desired range to let you focus your damage. Everyone has a favourite convergence they want to use, so you want to match up the Mark II range setting with the convergence for maximum effect. The RAF recommended convergence is 250 yards, which is 230 metres. After the range is set, you're going to set the wingspan according to the target. So for fighters, that'll be approximately 33 feet, but if you want more exact numbers, they're down below. As you've seen, this is a really informative and well-presented video, and I do recommend it to you. I'll include a link in the description below. Okay, let's build this. We've got some 3D printed parts, a box of those. We have assembly steps and wiring. In the download that includes that PDF for these steps and the wiring, we also have the list of parts we need. And if you don't want to source those yourself, you can get one of these construction kits. That's construction kit one. And that contains everything you need and more. And construction kit two contains all the screws. And I'll include a link of where you can get that or you can source all the parts yourself. And the download includes a link to where you can source each individual part through Amazon, eBay or various places. And we'll begin with step one. 
Actually, I'm going to gloss over step one, because step one is to assemble two Maghull 6803F units, and that's what these are. I've done these so many times, it's the same thing that went into the throttle quadrant for the Spitfire and for the P40B. They're going into the Mosquito. These are a really versatile unit for creating an axis in any flight control. So I'll link to a video in the description about how to assemble it, because you've probably seen me do that several times already. Uh, just to point out, though, that the first one is the standard red, blue, white wiring, RBW, and then the other one, so you don't get them mixed up, is the alternate wiring of RBG, red, black, green. So that's what those two are. And the red, blue, white one is going to go into the range base, and this will be for the range indicator, and the red, black, green will be for the base feet indicator. So before I start step two, I'm going to take you through steps two to six, because we've got basically two assemblies here. We've got this mag hole with the red, blue, white, and that's the range base, and that has a range base indicator that's got range written on it, and that slots into a cavity there that isn't marked with range, but you can differentiate it from this other cavity by the fact that it's got that quite distinctive lug at the top. So that's an assembly. And then you've got the base feet indicator. So that's the base feet indicator, the base feet mag hole, and the base feet assembly. So don't mix those two up. So let's start now by assembling the number two, the range mag hole into the range base. And the way that goes, the wires come up like that, and it drops in here, like that, nice and snug. Should be a fairly smooth finish at the top. Turn that over, and three, M4, eight mils. Don't use 10 mils, make sure you check. If you use 10 mils, you'll break the mag hole. And then just rotate that D shape, like that, so the D is down, and thread the wires through. So that you can now slot the, there we go, you can slot the indicator onto the D, and this is where you use a 10mm. Okay, that's one of them. And the next one, now this time the wires don't come towards you, they go through the slot in the back. I think you can see that. So let's get those through, do them in the right order, don't twist them over. Green. Gently pull those through. Yep, that's in there. And again, same 8mm long. Don't use a 10. Okay, and then we've got the D at the bottom again. That means we can align with that D. And that will go over there. And then this is where you use the 10. Okay. That's the base feet indicator and the range feet indicator. Okay, just one more thing. This is actually step four. It's kind of in the middle of these, but I just thought it was easy to explain on the video uh, the way I've assembled those two units. And that is that the middle plate, which is this one, it goes over the range base, range, so that the three posts are well seated. Those are the three posts and these are the seatings. So we need to thread the wires and put them in the correct order of white, blue, and red. Okay, we've got that in there now. And now you can, should be able to, you should be able to, there you go, you can feel it click into place so that that doesn't even fall off. That's, that's kind of snug now. That was number four, so now we are up to number six. And now with the range unit inverted, that's number seven, there we go, invert it again, thread the red, blue, white wires again, so that's these, through the base feet unit, that's this, and the way we're gonna, this is going to work is that those are going to meet like that. So we're going to be threading through that slot here, and let's do it in the same order again. The white first, and then the blue. Let's make sure we don't have any twisting. go, looking good. And you can see that those two can come together now nice and snug. 
And then that gets us to step eight, where we combine, we join these two units together with 30 mil long M4s. So you might have to just fiddle around until you find the seating for those. That's it. And now we can fasten those together. There we go, nice and tight. What a lovely little unit that is. Great design, Harry. What a lovely unit that is. Moves really nicely. All right, that's number eight complete. Now let's do number nine. We're gonna join the top section, that's that, to the sphere section, that sort of roundy bit there, with three M4 10 mils. Now it says check the video because we need to get the holes aligned right. Hold the top section that way so that the slope, if you can imagine that there would have been a sheet of glass at or was it perspex perhaps mounted there, that's away from you. This sphere section is towards you so that there is a hole here at the front and a, and a hole at the back. And now if I try it that way, I can see that those screws won't fit. So what I need to do is rotate it 180. That looks better. Now the, now the, the screw holes and the, uh, the screw holes align and I can put it on that way around. What you don't want is that way around so that things are offset by 90 or 60 degrees. Okay, so that's the right way to do it. And we go with the 10 mils here. Okay, now we've got that piece put together. Now we can connect the top and the sphere section to the range unit. And you can see that there's some holes here. So let's get these things lined up. So we want the range and the base pointing towards us. We've got a hole there. We've got that pointed towards us so that the slope's at the back and that just drops on like that. And in here we can get two M410 mils. And two. Right, let's do number 11. Thread all the wires through the base connector. Now the base connector is going to go like this. You see those two little lugs there? They're going to slot over these two cavities like that. Like that. And in order for that to work, we need to get all these wires through here. So we don't want these crossing over too much. So if let's hold it that way around with the cavity at the bottom pointing down and let's put these through one at a time, right to left. Green, then that red. Okay, so there they are, let's pull them through. Perfect, that's it, that's what we wanted. Right, and that should be quite a snug fit, should hold by itself. Now we're gonna fit the fixture to the Slide Pillar XL with M4, 10 mil long, four of them. And the way they go is like that. So it's that way up. 10 of the, uh, four of the 10 mils. All right, that looks good. So we're up to 13. And this is where we're going to joint these two red wires and create another red wire because we only need the one common red wire. And we don't need a long piece for the common one. Uh, so I think we can afford to take the longer of these two red ones and then take off a piece about, what's that, 10 cm? Round about, yeah. So just with my fingers, I've stripped off a good amount of insulation. I'm gonna give these a twist and we use an M3 flange head, six mil long. And I need my slightly smaller PH1 screwdriver for this. Get that in there. Put a little shepherd's crook twist around this. And then we hook it over here. And I think I'll hold it with my right hand and tighten it with my left here. Okay, nice and secure, brilliant. Right, we are very close now. Okay, we're very close now. We're just going to get an RJ45 socket from the box. And we're going to wire up these six wires. Or is it five? Five wires. As per, as per this wiring diagram. So let's get going. It's, remember it's just a tiny strip of insulation off each one, not too much. I'll do all that first. And a twist each time. And you 
go. That's the way. And then in it goes. And then we go red. Just hold it in place, click it closed. Now I can see that some of that is snagged across. I'm just going to clear it. Click it again. Looks good. Blue. Good. Black. White and green. Okay, take a look at them. Make sure that uh, there's no stray wire crossing across that may go into another channel. And remember to keep the little bit of exposed strip wire very short so that it doesn't protrude along and possibly touch against a tooth coming through the, the barrier into the next channel. Right, that looks good. And then we click this in place. There it is. And then we just join them up. Tell you what, Harry, I'm just sort of thinking that if that space there had a bit more cavity to it, you could you could tuck these wires out of the way a bit more easily. Got it. Okay, nothing is being nipped. Okay, that's the gun sight fitted to the fixture, and now we're going to clamp it with that bracket there. And there are four M48 mils, which is one, two, and then one each side here. So let's get that in quickly before this falls apart. Those are eight mils, not tens. So let's get that in. There we go. Brilliant. Really good. Now you can see the action. Um, oh, you're wondering about the white. Yes, basically that is um, something you're just going to have to do if you want to. You're not going to see it in VR, of course, but if you'd like the white in there, uh, the trick is just to use white silicon or decorator's cork. You just sort of rub it in and then you wipe the top off and uh, that fills in quite nicely. All right, so we're up to 16 now, which is where this slide grip goes like this. And that goes to your instrument panel mounting system so you can get the position just right. And you use a couple of M4 14 mils here. Just when you've got the position just right. Okay, and then an M5 Allen head bolt and nut to the grip. So that is the M5 here. And those are M5 nuts. So let's get that in. Okay, so that's the M5 going in there. And then we can simply slide that over the mounting system, uh, nip it in place to get the horizontal correct position, and then adjust at the back to get the height position. Okay, so that's the mounting system. The next step is to connect it to the universal hub. Now the input for that is H8, and I'll just show you on the screen how that aligns up with the other inputs. And I won't take you through the wiring for that. Really that's more about the wiring of the universal hub, which I've got in separate videos. But what I do include in the download, as well as the wiring for the RJ45 for the gun sight, is the H8 input for the universal hub. You've got five wires there. It connects just the same way that the throttle was done, where there were three axes, throttle mixture prop speed. Uh, this time, the, there are two axes. You've got the shared common red, which goes to the shared jointed red inside the universal hub. Then you've got the blue and the black, and they go to the ground section, blue and black, axis one and two. Then you've got the white and the green, and that's the signal, which is the middle of these, white and the green. Um, if you've built the Spitfire flight stick, then the top row is already taken with the brakes. Uh, and just make sure you don't get confused there and um, get, the, get the wrong row. Um, remember, there's two to leave alone before you are up at the input pins. So check out the Universal Hub assembly guide. I'll link to that in the description. And it should be fairly obvious how to connect that up. Right, so number 20. Connect the Ethernet to input H8 of the Universal Hub. So the other end of that is in H8. Let's put this into the gun sight. So 
now that's connected but what I don't have yet and you should do it this way around what I don't have yet is the USB powered up for the universal hub so that's the thing to do after you've connected your Ethernet's otherwise the axes get a little confused so let me plug that in that's the sound we want and then let's calibrate that's joy.cpl which I've got launched here and you can see Authenticate has appeared so let's do properties on that and you should see dial and Z rotation showing up and you can see now that range is Z rotation and dial is the base feet and we just need to calibrate so the trick for that is you hit settings calibrate um, I haven't got other controls plugged in you should have them all plugged in or your calibration might skew the ones that aren't plugged in so um, but for the sake of this video I'll keep it simple so I'm just calibrating those two so hit next on that center point fine right so this is which one is it the bottom one no dial is yeah so now we can see the movement there I like to hit display raw data and you can see it's moving between a thousand and 2700 um, which is a decent amount of resolution okay that's done and now the top one, that's going between, wow, that's a good range, 6, 699700 up to 3200. It's a little bit of jitter, but it, it, it disappears when, you're, um, when, it, when it's in use. Next, and in fact, you'll see whether there's any jitter showing or not. Finish, there you go, rock solid. Full deflection on the base, full deflection on the range. Fabulous. And then it's just a case of configuring for your sim. So well done. You've done it. That is a very unique flight control. I don't know if anybody else is doing that. And thank you very much to Harry for designing it and making it available for the Authenticate community. That is the RAF Reflector Gunsight Mark II. So if you've built one of those, please don't be shy. Um, post a photo. Uh, wherever you like. It'd be nice to see one on the Authenticate download page with a review or if you're on Discord, please post a photo there. And I look forward to bringing more flight controls to you very soon. As I said, I think the next one, fingers crossed, will be the Mosquito Fighter Bomber engine control box or throttle unit, I guess. Bye for now, folks.